welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. Tell me, did you sing along? Did you? I know a lot of people do. In fact, my eldest godson was winding his siblings up the other week because he kept singing it over and over and over and over again. So, sorry guys, but yay! Now, although, if Editing Angie has done this right, you are watching me in black and white, hopefully the thumbnail, description and title will have told you this is not actually a photo inspiration collaboration film even though those all start off in black and white as well but I still don't want you to see this finished look until the end of the film so that's why it's in black and white now if you have watched uh, the photo inspiration collaboration first three-way collab between myself Anya and Nona you will understand why we are called uh, the bitches of Eastwick. If you haven't, it might be an idea just to pause this video, open that one up, just 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 the first little bit of it, just just so you understand how bitches of Eastwick came around. But we are the bitches of Eastwick. We will be collabing together on a regular basis, not just in my photo collaboration series, but also in our very own Bitches of Eastwick collaboration series. Hmm. Many, many words. Many, many, many words. If you have come here from Anya or Nona's, welcome. Uh, slightly nutty, half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird. Blethers. Quite a bit. So if you like chatty videos, you're going to love this. But, you all want to know what this I'm saying you want to know what this is. You've read the bloody title, haven't you? You've seen the thumbnail. You know what this is, is we are all taking our favourite shade from each of the four individual palettes in the Vault Collection and making an eye look out of it. Now... But we all know, this vault collection, not so good. So, there are fewer shades in each palette that I could choose from. Because I wanted to choose ones that actually worked well. So obviously that reduces down the amount, given how bloody awful these palettes are. So the question is, what are my favourite shades? Will they work together to make a cohesive eye look? And how well will they play with each other? Because although you would expect palettes from the same series and from the same brand, to work well with each other. Given the vault's performance, I'm not sure we can assume that. So, if you want to find out exactly which shades I've chosen, and you want to see what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, get comfy, here it comes. And don't forget at the end of it to watch Anya and Nona's film. Because I know that's what I'm about to go to. Well, when this goes live anyway, I've got to go and edit this now, but you get the drift of it. And here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. You will have seen this in the intro, probably. 
I don't know, because I haven't filmed it yet. Oh, I, I'm really struggling with this eye today, folks. It's It's gone super dry on me. This is the problem with fibro. Your eyes either continually run or they go super, super dry. Um, and I have put drops in earlier, but they don't seem to be helping. Anyway, that's enough of my problems. This is the first, it's the second time the bitches of Eastwick have collabed. But the first time that all three of us collabed in like the, the one thing rather than me just collabing with Anya or me just collabing with Nona or Anya and Nona collabing. Nona? Nona. Oh. Sorry girls, it's super early and I just didn't get a lot of sleep last night. This is the first official Bitches of Eastwick film. Um, we're probably going to do quite a few collabs, as well as the photo inspiration series on my channel. We're going to do other collabs as well. And this is the first one. And I actually suggested this because we'd all got the vault. So I said, how about... There's four palettes. How about we each pick our favourite colour from each palette and try and make an eye look out of it. See how it comes out. The girls liked the idea. So, yeah, we're running with it. Now, I'll be honest with you, I haven't used these for a while because I've been using so many other palettes that I've been trying out and testing with. Because when I get a palette, um, Normally you'll see a first impression and then I'll continue to use it and then you per perhaps get a second film with using some of the other colours um, because I like to know that my first impression was correct as to whether I like it or whether I don't and if I do change my mind on it then I tend to come back on and tell you so. So I could have looked at these last night and gone through and said, oh, I'll choose this colour and I'll choose that colour to make sure that I get a cohesive look. Yeah, I didn't do that. I am literally going to pull each palette and I'm going to swatch my favourite colour for you on the back of my hand. And we're going to see whether I can get a cohesive look out of it. A little bit scary. Right. I love this ribbon thing, but it does tend to fall back in when you're trying to... I don't know. Right, what have we got first? Bling Boss. Okay. So Bling Boss is the purpley one. And my favourite shade is this one up here called Hirsch. Hush, thought I had to call my name now. Sorry, it's not called cool. it's just hush hush without the rest of it. Um, and it very much reminds me of um, Born Fresco from Modern Renaissance, which is probably one of my favourite shades out of that palette. That'd be a good shade to start with. Yeah, that works, that works. And then we've got Dark Magic palette. And I think this is actually my favourite of all four palettes. And my favourite shade, as you'll all remember if you've seen my series, is Potion down here because it's the only one that actually looks like it's actually been bloody used. Because I always keep my palettes as clean as possible. So, let's try Potion. I'm not flipping you off, honestly. Okay. Mm. Okay. Right, ring the alarm. It's not really my style palette, is it? Uh, to be honest, if I'm going to go for red, I'm going to pick up my blood sugar palette, aren't I? But out of all of these, Probably this one, which is like a deep burgundy. It's very similar to that, but that is just a plain warm brown. This has actually got like a reddy under tint to it. 
So let's, this is called framed. So let's see how that looks alongside the colours I've chosen already. Too bad, I suppose. And the final one is the one that I thought was going to be my favourite and performed the absolute worst. Armed and gorgeous. I was so disappointed because if these colours had worked, it would have been one of my favourite palettes, full stop. And from what I can remember, the only shades I liked in here were the shimmers, which is fortunate because I need a shimmer. I swear I have not pre-planned this. Right, so Armed and Gorgeous is this one. Um, right, having a look at these, which of the shimmers have I used most? Uh, looking at it, I think I've used Coin more than anything else. And that's the front door. Hold on. I am back. Sorry. I'm a bit out of puff because I'm in so much pain. I did quite a long drive the day before yesterday. Um, and I'm, I've been suffering for it the last two days. <laughs> yesterday, I couldn't even get off the sofa most of the day. So as I was saying, my favourite shade was Coin, which I swatched on the way to the door. So, I think, I think I can make something halfway decent out of these. Well, in terms of colour scheme anyway, in terms of performance of the palette, that's, that's a completely different matter entirely. Now, um, <clears throat> let's put that box up there for a minute. I have my iced coffee in my strawberry glass with my metal spoon. Uh, as I assume you and I've talked a bit of housekeeping. My films are aimed at all skill levels from beginners to absolute experts. Please excuse my throat just growling then. So if I'm going too slowly for you, either because... Oh, this is what I mean about how irritated my eyes today. Uh, if I'm going too slowly for you, either because of my chronic pain is making me having to keep stop. Stop ping. Apparently it's affecting my grammar as well today. Um, or because I'm, you know, slowly going through each stage so that beginners can keep up with me. Uh, just speed me up. Please don't whinge. Right, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And I have used my usual antiperspirant primer. There we go. Uh, details of which are in the description box. So... I'll give you a closer up look now those swatches. As you can see, I don't exactly swatch the best, but shimmers always swatch better than mattes anyway because they have like oils and silicones and stuff in them. Um, so let's see how well this goes, shall we? I'm actually trying out um, a new brush today. I did an order from a boozy shop with some of my birthday money because I discovered that they had the um, the Wet n Wild Stick Foundation which we still can't get here in the UK uh, easily um, they also had the Coty S one and I had just about finished my previous one so it actually worked out cheaper to buy the Coty S bun from Boozy Shop at the moment because Brexit hasn't happened yet than it is to buy it off of Amazon. And because I'd spent, they had a special offer on because I'd spent X amount, I could choose a free gift. So I chose this Boozy Shop branded tapered blending brush, which is a lovely shade of pink. Um, white bristles, so they're going to get stained quick. But it, it actually feels nice and soft. Right, all I've got on my eyes at the moment is Max Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I have not set. Now, just very, very quickly, you can see all of my, when my eyes are open, I've got 
brush is falling on me all over the place here. You can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner. There's no part of it that's completely hidden. So I don't have hooded lids. What I do have though is deep set eyes. So I do encounter a lot of the problems that hooded eye uh, people have. Now, if any part of your static lid covers completely, as in all the way down to the lash line, any part of your mobile lid, mm. then you have either a half or a full hooded eye, or what's known as a mono or an mm. Asian eye. Now, you can still follow my tutorials. Um, if I show you what I mean about deep set eyes, if I cover my visible mobile lid there and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back in. And if I cover my static lid and close my eye, you can see I've, I've got half the same again there. So I do have similar problems to people with hooded eyes in that if I'm cutting my crease, I have to go in a very, very different shape. I get transference of shimmers onto the upper lid. When I wear glitters, even with a glitter glue, I end up with bare patches. But you can still follow my tutorials. All of my tutorials are hooded eye friendly. All you need to do, get a brush like this or a pencil brush, and with your eye open, just sketch where you need your crease line to be. So if you imagine, if you couldn't see any of my mobile lid here, I would be drawing a line here, like this. So you're creating the illusion of having a more visible mobile lid than you have. Now, the way to make that look um, more like it is actually a mobile lid and it does go back in is that we're going to use a darker colour through the crease because anything dark recedes, anything light comes forward. Now, obviously, it is going to reduce the amount of space between your crease and your brow, so just use smaller versions of the brushes that I'm using. Okay? Okay. Let's get going with. Bling Boss and Hush, Hush, don't come I'm half Welsh. We, we sing a lot. So, yeah, dusty as I remember. So what I'm going to do initially, because I've not set the lid, because I know how badly these perform, and I want to get as much colour out of them as possible, so I'm just patting that in place. Rather than going straight in with a swiping motion because where the lid is not set, it will tend to, parts of it will probably grab more than others. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm basically I'm setting the lid with the colour. Once I've completely covered that area, I then feel safe to do some very light circular blending. If you find when you're doing this that you're losing pigment, pick up a bit of pigment on the end of your brush and blend with the additional pigment. I hold the brush right at the very end so that I put as little pressure as possible on my lid. I'm going to go up again, same thing, pat it on. Because of deep creasing here and here, I do sometimes struggle to get any shadows to go on in a non-patchy manner. And I like to try and leave about a sort of four or five mil gap um, between the base of my brow and the colour just so that when I put the brow highlight on it's more distinguishable especially if because long term viewers will know I break all the makeup rules I will put shimmers in my crease I've done all shimmer looks before now so if you're then going to be using a shimmer as your brow bone highlight you kind of need a little bit of a gap there so that you can see it um, I do sometimes do looks where I take the colour right up to the brow, but they tend to be more editorial looks because um, 
to a certain extent it's quite an old fashioned way of doing your look. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with that one. So now I'm going to do the same thing this side. And obviously, those of you who don't know, I'm actually blind in this side. So this eye I can close. The other eye, if I close it, I'm relying on muscle memory and a wing and a prayer because obviously I can't see anything from this one. Which can produce some interesting scenarios, particularly when doing liner. Um, but at the moment, because as I was saying, my fibro is making my eyes either streamy, streamy, or super, super dry. Combine that with the hay fever that's currently kicking in, because um, I get it early, I get the, the grass and tree hay fever more so than the flowers. Um, I just I'm not able to do liner at the moment because even my even my really good waterproof liners are just not coping. So you can see I've got super deep creasing on this lid, which I've not got on this one, which can sometimes cause some sort of tiger striping or gapping of colour. Um, it's because this eye got pulled around when I was a kid, like you know. And I'm talking five, six years old, so I'm talking 40 years ago. Um, and there is a marked difference between both of my lids. This lid is a lot looser than my right lid. And I always, always get more fallout on this one because it moves more. But that's why we do circular movements, because if I slow it down, let me just pick up a bit of extra pigment because I'm losing some. If I slow it down, by doing this, you're ever so gently moving the skin around in both directions so that you're actually covering everywhere. You shouldn't get any white patches, but you're not stretching the lid out because you're holding your brush right at the end and you're putting very, very little pressure on the lid itself. Okay, do you know what? I'm quite happy with that so far so far, she says. Knowing how much of a shit show this could turn into. <clears throat> right, I'm going to use a, yeah it's dirty this side but I haven't used this side yet. Um, I'm going to use a microfiber cloth to clean the brush off with. Um, partly because I find it actually is more gentle on your brushes than a colour switch. Because a colour switch is basically just a um, like a like a scratchy sponge uh, and I just find that this particularly if you've got natural hair brushes is is just a a nicer way but yeah as we can see we've already got some staining on that brush so let's go into dark magic and pick up some potion I wonder if I can get a song for all of them potion love potion number nine okay Clearly, I'm in a bit of a singy mood. I know why. It's because it should be the karaoke tonight. But there isn't one this month. So. Pick up some pigment. Now what I'm going to do here, because I've already set with this colour, I can now start swiping. So I'm going to start off by running this backwards and forwards through my crease. Or if you've had to raise your crease, now's the point that you follow that line and swipe and then just some very very gentle blending. I'm going to go and pick a bit more up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do circular blending but I'm going to make sure I'm in contact with this line all the time because I, I still want to be able to see some of this um, sort of mauve that I've put down. So circular movements but keeping in touch with that crease line. So basically it's sort of taking it about sort of halfway up I suppose. It should be if the pigment would actually lay down. This is the problem, uh, you know, the, the, the colour stories for these palettes are absolutely great. I mean Dark Magic um, and Armed and Gorgeous were two of my favourites when I first saw them 
armed and gorgeous. The grains in there are just awful to work with. Um, this grain, as you can see, is going on a little bit patchy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to just tapping it into place first. This is something that you can do even if you've set the lid. If you're finding that you're getting a, a colour that's going on patchy, go back to tapping it on. And then gently buff. And if you find that as you're buffing, you're losing pigment again, pick a bit of pigment up on your brush before you start to buff. And you can normally get a halfway decent look out of it. I mean, that's, that's not looking too bad now. I keep sitting back and looking because obviously both eyes are different shapes and I need to make sure that I'm getting the kind of shape that I'm wanting with this. I'm not overly worried about this particular bit here being patchy because I am going to go in with that, um, that darker burgundy. I just want to make sure that it's really softly blending into the mauve. Hmm. And now I will repeat that on to the side. Yes, half Welsh, half Yorkshire. Tell you what, I make a fantastic roast dinner. I make my own Yorkshires. Make the batter in the morning, leave it standing. And uh, um, pull the batter in. The batter goes in about that thick and then yeah, come back in. Batter goes in about that thick and they come out like this. I'm proud of my Yorkshire's. Everybody loves my Yorkshire's. Whenever I'm doing a roast, it's like I have to make sure I do extra Yorkshire's if we've got people coming. Because everyone, even people that, I oh no, it's like one year, um, grandma, husband's grandma that we lost last year. Um, she was up for lunch, Easter. I did a, I did a lamb for Easter. Um, and I've done Yorkshire's. And she's like, well, I won't have Yorkshire's because she was watching her waist kind of thing. And then she saw the Yorkshire's and said, maybe I'll just have the one. <laughs> she ended up having about two, I think. So that was a good compliment. And you can see this one is really, really going patchy this side. So I'm definitely going to have to... Don't pull your lid out like this if the circular movements work for you. You've noticed I don't do it over this side. But I have to do this because otherwise what happens is I get pigment in the deep creasing and then through the day as I move my eye, because it hasn't been properly blended in, because it's been tucked into the crease, um, it, I end up with it falling down my face during the day, which is great if you want to create multicoloured freckles throughout the day, but if that's not the look you're going for, it's not so helpful. And you can see I've got, it's gone super, super patchy just here. Um, but I think that could be my eyelid, to be honest. I think it could be the creasing that I've got just there causing the issue. So I'm just going to pick up the pigment and pat it in. And rather than doing circular movements, I'm just going to keep lightly patting backwards and forwards to blend it out instead. That tends to help you not sweep the colour away too much. And again, just sitting back and making sure they look symmetrical. Remember to relax your brows because I don't know about you, but I don't walk around like that all day. I'm really surprised. Okay. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. Clean the brush off. Yeah, this is definitely staining. 
this is the problem I love white brushes for how they look when you when you first get them and when you clean them um, but I mean there's there's no more pigment coming off of that as you can see but oh well See if this one will, this may not be um, thick enough to work with the abomination of these shadows. This is the Morphe M562. I'm going to try this one first on framed. Oh, blimey, framed. I suppose picture in a frame. Frame, frame Roger Rabbit. Who framed Roger Rabbit? But I can't remember what the theme tune was for that. Right. So, picked up a fair amount on there. I'm just going to tap off into my. I still have my colour switch here for tapping off into because it helped keep things nice and tidy. And I'm literally just going to gently wiggle this through my crease. Again, if you've moved your crease line up, just follow the line that you've laid down. Okay, that's not going on too badly. Because what I'm going to do now, pick up a bit more of this pigment, and I'm going to do the circular blending motion, but I'm going to do it right on that line. I'm not going to travel up the eye at all. It'll be easier to see with this one, because obviously I can close this eye. What I'm going to do this side is sort of tilt my head back and, and sort of look down so you can kind of see what I'm doing. But it's the smallest circular movements that you can possibly do all the way along the line just to soften the edges slightly. But without covering up too much of the green that we've already laid down. And just very gently, very lightly, all the way along. First in one direction and then changing it to come back the other way. And you can see now this eye looks like it goes much further back. So that's what I was saying about creating the illusion of that part of your eye receding back. Pick up a bit more of this pigment. And I'm just going to run it across sort of the outer third of the eye pretty much coming up to the edge of my iris which makes you think of goo goo dolls so okay again it's going a little bit patchy here but that is the creasing of my lid doing that. Um, I could put down some, some glitter glue underneath it to help hold it. But to be honest, when my eyes are so deep set, it just tucks back in anyway. Nobody's going to see it unless I'm falling asleep in front of them because they're so boring. In which case, they're probably not going to be worrying too much about um, my makeup. So I'm just really gently buffing that, I like. This is actually turning out better than I was expecting it to. I have to be completely honest at this point. So, same thing this side. Start off by wiggling it through the crease. And I'm literally following the shape of my eyeball or the you know, so the, rather than the socket, because the socket is here, and my eyeball is here. That's why I do that with my eye open still. But now I can show you the blending with my eye closed. So again, tiny, tiny circular movements. Let me put this down so I can actually... There we go. Tiny, tiny circular movements all the way across. Again, I'm going to have to do that on the inner bit of my eye. 
do not do this unless you absolutely have to. Otherwise, you will end up with creases like what I have got. And I can assure you, as you get older, they only get worse. They were not this deep five years ago, put it that way. Um, but they were definitely there. But they do get a lot deeper, even though I... I'm very fastidious with my eye creams, etc. Okay, quite like that, quite like that. Really surprised with how well this is turning out, actually. And then again, just patting it onto the outer third of the eye. Doing a little bit. For precision, you can come up to the top of the brush. But for any blending, you really need to be down at the bottom, just so that you don't put too much pressure on the lid at all. Because the skin on your eyelids is basically the thinnest skin on your body. If you were to imagine that um, the skin on your body is kind of letterhead thickness, you know, like a standard letter you'd, you would receive. Um, the skin on your elbows, your knees and the bottom of your feet is anything from stiff brown wrapping paper envelope type thing all the way up to cardboard depending on your particular type of skin. The skin on your face is like a newspaper. The skin on your eyes is tissue paper. Treat it as gently. Alright and I'm, I just I just sort of flick up at the edges here because it does help where I'm not able to use my um, liner at the moment, just by flicking up just a little bit at the end there, it does what a winged liner would do, and it gives the impression of the eye being elongated and coming up and out, which is a very flattering shape for most people. Okay, I've got to admit, I am actually very pleasantly surprised with how well this is looking. Who'd have thunk it, huh? Okay, now I'm going to go in with the shimmer. Just cleaning the pigment off the brush. So, let me grab... I'm just going to get one of my, I bought a set of these from eBay, they're actually nail art or nail acrylic brushes, but what I like about them, I tend to use them when I'm doing cut creases, I'm not going to do a cut crease today, but what I like about them, look how thin and fine they come down from the side. It just gives you that little bit more accuracy. This one's a bit fluffy because it's just been washed, basically. Right, so going into Armed and Gorgeous and into Coin, which is gold. Always believe in your soul. Sorry. So I'm going to pick the pigment up on that. And I'm going to wet the pigment using, this is just I Heart Rev Fixing Spray in Vanilla and Coconut, because it smells nice. Um, don't ever put a wet brush into a pressed shadow, because you will cause sealing and hard pan. And although you can fix that, eventually it will corrupt the whole shadow. So, pigment on the brush. But the brush. I always like to dry the ferrule off so that there's no moisture going down, loosening the glue, holding those bristles. I'm just going to grab a small mirror so I can see close up what I'm doing here. And I'm just going to apply this particularly vibrant gold onto the two thirds of the lid. But so far, hasn't had 
anything added to it. And this is what I was meaning about, it goes down nice and thin, you can get right into the corners. Now I know I'm going to get this transferring up onto the upper lid during the day, but I really don't mind at the moment. That's actually looking super pretty. So I'm going to dry the brush off on microfiber cloth. If you're using a colour switch, I used to just then dry it off on my hand like that. And I'm going to reload the brush. Like so. Wet the brush. Dry the ferrule. Now with this one, I do have to stretch it out because otherwise the pigment settles in those deep creases and I do get shimmery bits falling down all through the day. You can see how much further that's gone back in so oh, I'll have to dry the brush and go back into the pigment again. This is actually one of the few shades that I did really, really like. Because it is a real, it's a true yellow gold. There's no green undertone to it at all. Don't get me wrong, there's times that I want a gold with a green undertone. But um, on this occasion, because I've got green up here anyway, I didn't want green in the gold because I wanted it to be able to stand on its own. Hmm. Do you know what? That's actually not too bad. Okay. I'm going to pause you now while I do my foundation, etc. And I will be back to finish off under the eyes and uh, yeah this is actually not as much of a shit show as I was expecting it to be who'd have thought it right see you well, for you right now hey I'm back okay okay right I'm going back into ring the alarm and I'm going to use this flat top brush that I showed you earlier, funny enough. And I'm going to go into that framed. Get your picture in the frame. You might find one eventually. And I'm just going to run this, connecting with the shade on the upper lid. I'm just going to run it under my bottom lashes, going about two thirds of the way along. I always flinch doing this side because obviously I don't have any peripheral vision and uh, I'm relying on muscle memory and a viewfinder that's quite a long way away um, to not poke myself in the eye and long term viewers will know, not always successful. Okie dokie, I like, I like, I like, I like. Uh, and I think... I think I'll go into Bling Boss. Let's just clean this brush off. This is actually the brush that came in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. But I like it because although it's flat topped, it's chunky, so it's great for blending out the lower lines. So I'm going to go back into, sing it with me. Hush, hush, thought I hush, come my name out. You know I'm going to end up playing that all blooming afternoon now, don't you? Yeah. 
So I've picked up tap off and I'm just going to gently buff that along the lower lash line just to soften the look and pick up on the colour theme that I used on the top lid. This really is a lovely mauve, or mauve, as Americans tend to pronounce it. Do you know what? I'm not mad at it. Hmm. Um, I was trying a different bronzer out today. I was trying this out, the W7 Hollywood Bronze and Glow. Because I've been trying to find this. This is the Revolution um, Renaissance Glow, which is their version of the Charlotte Tilbury. And that is the perfect cool tone shade for my skin. And I've been trying to find it, and Revolution have stopped doing it. The closest they do now is the Bronze and Glow, but that's just a fraction warmer. So I thought I'd give this a try. And this was half price over the Bank Holiday weekend as well. Because it looks very, very similar in tone to the Revolution one. So, yeah. So, I thought I'd give this highlight a go as well. I don't think they've got names. I think they're just... Yeah. No, it's no specific name. It's just the bronze and glue. This is literally an old lip brush that I bought off of eBay years ago. I'm just going to pop some highlight up under my brow there. Can you even see that highlight? Okay, this is far too subtle a highlight for me. That's just not going to work. Let me have a swig of my iced coffee. I'll grab a different one out. Right, this is my Gerard Cosmetics. You can see how long I've had her, look. She's Audrey. I had her long before I had my Gerard Cosmetics code. Uh, I don't think... If you're watching it when this film first goes out, I don't think my code will work at the moment because they've got the offer on with the Pride boxes. Uh, but if you follow the link that I've got in my description box, you'll be able to pick up any offers that are on and any discounts that are available. But what I love about these is with their highlighters they have this extra little plastic drawer so it's great for when you're travelling because if she does get broken you've got that drawer to stop her from going everywhere. I mean look you can see how long I've had her you can't even, you can't barely you, the G's gone you can just about see the bottom of the sea but that's about it. Bottom of the sea under the sea Everything's better down where it's wetter and not easy. Okay, I'm obviously in one of those moods today. That's more what I was looking for. Yeah, it's pretty. I'm going to run that round my tear duct. Now, for me, for my shape, because mine are almond shaped anyway, I've actually found the most flattering way for me is to actually then bring it down under the tear duct along the first third and kind of meet up with the shade that I've blurred underneath my lashes there. Um, that won't necessarily work for all eye shapes. Wow, look at how irritated my eye has been. It's got a huge break. jelly bit thing, an eye booger where it's been so dry even though I've had drops in her this morning. So, <laughs> apologies for that 
slight bit of grossness just there. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Around the tear duct, follow it along under the first third and blend in with that burgundy and the mauve. I like that. Right, I'm going to pause you one more time while I pop highlight over the rest of my face and put some mascara on and setting spray and lipstick and I will be back with the final look. So, uh, yeah, please don't go anywhere because you're going to see it right now. Right, I am back. My hair has gone completely nuts. The lipstick I've got on is the Revolution Retro Lux Metallic Lip Kit in Sovereign, but I don't use the lip liner, so I've literally just got the lipstick on. Which is quite nice actually. It's um although it's metallic, it it's like a gloss, but it's not that horrible sticky tacky gloss that you used to get. I actually used a different setting spray. I know, don't fall off your chair. I actually didn't use Gerard today. I tried this Milani Make It Dewy <laughs> uh, setting spray, 16 hour wear apparently, hydrate, illuminate and set. So, we'll see. Refreshing effect and a healthy looking glow. That's lovely. Right, so. This is my finished look using my favourite shades from each individual palette within the Jaclyn Morphe Vault. What do you reckon? Hmm? So I was really expecting to get colours that wouldn't work together, but I think fortunately I seem to have lucked out that my favourites uh, actually worked together quite well. Um, I wouldn't normally mix a burgundy with a khaki green, but do you know what? I might now. I normally think red and greens are like too Christmassy, but no, I, I quite do. This is wearable. In fact, this is, I'm so happy with this. I was fully expecting that I was going to film this and then go, <laughs> take the photographs, film the, yeah, film the intro, take the photographs, take it all off. But no, I think I'm actually going to film a few more films, a couple of tag videos or something with this, because I actually quite like it. So, what do you think? Do you have the vault? What are your favourite shades? How do you think I did? Let me know in the comments. And, uh, yay. Now, obviously, I've got an awful lot of other films that you can watch. Um, do please check you are still subscribed. YouTube, do keep unsubscribing people. Pretty much every week I'm getting people message me saying, I had to resubscribe from you because I'd been unsubscribed, but I didn't realise. Um, because I was still appearing in their news feeds, so they thought that I was still subscribed. And it's only when they actually watched me on their laptop instead of on their phone that they saw that the subscribe button hadn't been hit and they're like but I was subscribed and I had notifications turned on so I don't so please uh, I know I say this every time but do please check you are still subscribed because it's very disheartening when you put a film up and no subscribers and then a few days later they come back again and you're like what is this a bloody seesaw I don't know anyway now that you've watched hopefully liked maybe commented, possibly shared, and checked that you're still subscribed, I would be delighted if you would go and check both Anya and Nona's film out, because I tell you, right now I'm going to film the intro for this, film another couple of tag videos and then go and start editing, but when this goes live, you're watching me, I'm going to be watching well, depending on which one comes up on my newsfeed first, either Anya or Nona's film. But I'm going to be watching both of them, my girlies, my uh, bitches of Eastwick. We will rise and we will rule the 
platform of YouTube or something like that anyway. Basically, we just, we all got shit on by the same big subscribe, big uh, channel and decided to club together kind of like, you know that film, The First Wise Club? That's kind of us, except we're the bitches of Eastwick instead because we are sassy as hell. We are gorgeous as hell. In fact, I'd even go so far to say as we are fabulous, darling. So, with all that said, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, just like us. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.